Now, we're going to switch gears to something else that you detail out in the book. And this is, again, going to be an exercise. And we want you on Facebook to engage as well. Now, Don's going to walk you through this. And then our audience is going to go through this as well. We're going to give you a little bit of thinking and writing time. And then, again, we're going to have some more of our live audience members go through this with Don. So, Don, we're going to take them through this idea of a one-liner. Right. What do you mean by that? And how can we all create a one-liner? Well, a one-liner is one sentence that explains what you do or what you offer in such a way that you, you, you capture the most people's attention. And so it comes from the movie industry. A one-liner is what describes a film. So when you say, Jason Bourne has forgotten who he really is, but he's, you know, it makes me go, ooh, I'd like to see that, right? I'd like to see that movie. Uh, because all the suspense is in that one line. Now, a one-liner, every screenwriter knows if you create a good one-liner for your screenplay, it's worth $50,000 to half a million dollars if you can sell that screenplay. And then it goes into your phone two years later and you're looking for a movie and you read that one sentence, that could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You gotta really nail it. What we tend to do is when, when somebody asks what we do, we say, you know, my grandfather started the company or worse, we say, well, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> well, what do you say when you say it's complicated? You're saying, you're gonna to have to do a lot of math in your head and it's probably not gonna be worth your time, but here I go. Well, they're not gonna stick with you, right? We wanna say something that attracts them right away, that makes them interested in what we're offering. So I'm gonna take you through an exercise. It's a three-part sentence, or it could be multiple sentences, but it's a one-liner. It's something you can say really quickly and somebody says, what do you do? I want you to say this, right? And it works like this. Uh, the first thing is we wanna ask ourselves. Uh, uh, most businesses struggle to talk about what they offer. We have a process that helps them clarify their message so the companies get growing again. What we want to do in our one-liner, there's three parts. It's identify your customer's problem. This is the first part of your one-liner. You're going to open with the problem. When I walk on stage and give a speech, I don't say, my name is Donald Miller and I've been living here in Nashville a long time and I'm married to a wonderful woman named Betsy and we have a chocolate lab named Lucy and we have a dog named June Carter and I'm very glad to be with you today. Why? It doesn't start a story. I walk to the center of the stage and I say, we have a serious problem. We're wasting money on marketing and you have no idea who I am and I don't care if you don't know who I am because it's not about me, it's about you. Right? I open up with your problem. That's what starts a story. A story is a character that has a problem. And the sooner you can get to the problem, the sooner you can get to the hook. And now they're interested. You see? And so, uh, you know, if I'm selling a product, then I want to start with that problem because it makes the product valuable. I say, you know how you sometimes drop your phone in the toilet? Well, I invented the toilet net. <laughs> okay, that's not a good example. But. <laughs> I, can't. That is, I, that's, I stole that from some comedian. <laughs> anyway, so you want to identify your problem. So what is your customer's problem? And you want to say, most people struggle with, or do you know how a lot of people feel about this? Or a lot of people are afraid to go to the dentist because they're afraid it's going to hurt really bad. So when, I, when you say, hey, what do you do for a living? You say, well, you know how a lot of people hate going to the dentist because they're afraid it's going to hurt really bad? We actually have all the modern technology. You don't feel a thing. Most people, because of the laughing gas we use, they actually love going to the dentist. They come even when they don't have a toothache. You know, right? So you want to identify your customer's problem. Second, you want to explain your plan to help them. Now, this is where you can, you can mention your product, uh, how your product differentiates in the market, but basically, you know, you want to explain, here's what we do that solves the problem. So it's the problem, and then what I do that solves the problem, and then finally, third, the successful ending to their story. Most people struggle with this, but we created this thing so they don't have to struggle anymore, and they actually enjoy life, and it looks like this for them. What is that? It's the summary of a story. But it's a summary of a story that you're inviting them into. So those are the three parts of your one-liner. Now, here's our one-liner. Most, most businesses struggle to talk about what they offer. We have a process that helps them clarify their message so their company starts growing again. That's my one-liner. And I memorize this, and when the Uber driver says, what do you do? I say that. And inevitably, they're handing me their business card or they go to our, their website, they buy one of my products because they, I just opened a story loop in their brain that they want to close. I walk them down a path that they now want to walk themselves. And that's the essence of a one-liner. What's your customer's problem? A couple things. You want to be specific. 
don't be vague. Um, you know, a lot of people don't enjoy their lives. Okay, well, that, that's, I don't know, you know, that's a little bit too vague. Also, make sure it's a pain point. They need to feel this problem. What you're looking for is for them to say, that's me, that's me, I have that, right? That's my problem. You're looking for them to identify themselves in the problem. Second, or third, get it down to a sound bite. This is short. Again, you're gonna have to work on this a little bit, but it's worth the work, I promise. Make it super, super brief. Let's look at a pet store. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating. Well, it wasn't until you said that. <laughs> so I just agitated a problem. Here's a financial advisor. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future. How many of you feel that way? You're in business. It's like, yeah, I actually can't get my head around my financial future. I, I don't know if I'm rich or poor. I think I'm rich, but I don't know. Yeah, used car sales. Nobody, hey, you know how nobody likes to haggle with a used car salesman? Can you imagine if somebody said that to you and they're a used car salesman at a cocktail party? You'd be like, I'm buying my next car from this guy. He gets it. He understands my pain. All right, next is the plan, the part two. You want to make it feel like a new idea. I've never heard that before. It's a differentiator. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know uh, you could go to a used car dealer without haggling. So it's a differentiator. Make it understandable. Make sure it's not so elusive they can't understand it. And make it brief. Let's look at the pet store. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating. Here's the second part. So we source our food from trusted local vendors, right? And so now you're going, oh, I've never heard of a pet. At first, I didn't know, I don't know what my dog is eating. It's probably not healthy, but you're making sure it is, okay? Uh, financial advisor. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future. So we created a financial map that puts all your info on a weekly dashboard. That's the differentiator. That's the resolution to my problem. Lastly, used cars. Nobody likes to haggle with a used car salesman, so we remove the salesman entirely. You can choose and test drive a car hassle-free. By the way, people are making billions of dollars with that exact business plan. They remove the, the resistance from the actual process. And third, you describe a happy ending to their story. Make it the controlling idea of your business. That means all your employees are trying to get people to this thing. You know, you would think that StoryBrand was in the business of clarifying your message. That's just our product. That's not what we're in the business of. We're in the business of increasing your revenue. We have a whole Slack channel that's just dedicated to, I doubled my sales. This person wrote in, they're seeing huge increases, blah, blah, blah. And that's the motivator for our entire company. We've got to get these people money. Uh, that's the controlling idea is the resolution, the happy ending to their story is the business you're really in. Not the selling product. It's the happy ending that you're in the business in. Make it something they actually want so they go, they don't go, uh, that sounds interesting, but I don't know if I want that. Right? So I wouldn't say, so you can have a ton of flowers at your event. That, that's, not, that's not the controlling idea. So that everybody will think that you gave the best event of the year. That's the happy ending. Right? And the flowers are just the product that gets me the happy ending, but I'm actually the person who sells the happy ending. Okay, so let's look at them all together. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating, so we source our food from trusted local vendors, which ensures your pet stays happy and healthy. There it is. Three, three statements, one one-liner. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future, so we created a financial map that puts all your info on a weekly dashboard, giving you peace of mind about your finances. That's the result. Used car sales. Nobody likes to haggle with a car salesman, so we remove the salesman entirely. You can choose and test drive a car hassle-free, so you have a peaceful experience getting the car that you want. That's what a one-liner is. Now, what do we do with our one-liners? We have to repeat the one-liner hundreds of times before the masses will actually hear it. That means you use the exact same language over and over. I want you to do a lot with this one-liner. I want you to memorize it and be able to repeat it over and over. That means you're gonna write it and you're gonna put it on an index card and you'll put it in your pocket and you'll carry it with you for months. And when you're at the grocery store, you're gonna pull it out and you're gonna read it. It's gonna be really unnatural for you to break the habit of rambling when somebody asks what you do. But it's an important habit to break. So you wanna memorize it, okay? And then you wanna teach it to your entire team. When you teach the one-liner to your entire team, you convert everybody on your team into a sales force. Everybody. They sit next to somebody at a baseball game, they say, what do you do? Who do you work for? They're gonna repeat the one-liner. So the way you do that is you go down to the bank and you get a giant wad of $5 bills. You put a rubber band around it. Make sure it's like a mobster roll. And you're gonna walk around the office. First of all, you're gonna have a big day where you say, hey, we're all gonna repeat the one-liner. Because people ask us what we do 
And we, nobody knows how to answer. Do you guys, are you guys frustrated by that? Nobody knows how to answer. So we're just going to write it up here. We're going to create a sentence. We're all going to memorize it. And I, what I'm going to do is over the next six months, I'm going to walk around with this giant wad of $5 bills. And if I say, hey, what do we do? And you repeat this sentence, I'm going to give you a $5 bill, right? Now, what, what you just did is you gamified some discipline of actually memorizing this thing because your team's not going to want to do it. And you made it positive. And once you're done with that 500 bucks, let's say you spent, you know, $250. It's the best $250 you ever spent. Because now everybody knows. You know, and I, it took me months and then I started hearing it on the phones around the office. I'm like, they're saying it. They're saying it, right? And you just converted everybody into a sales team. It's free. You just, you just converted everybody into a sales team for free. You didn't even hire a salesperson. Open your keynotes with this statement. You wanna, you know, if you're giving a keynote, you wanna say, hey, most people struggle with this. We have a product that does this, makes their life look like this, all right? Let's talk about what we really want. And then you, know, you open and you close. And you use it as, on as much marketing collateral as possible. Parts of your one-liner could be in your header, but it's probably too long at the top of your website. But there is a part of a website. I get into the parts of a website that need to be on your website in my book. There's a whole chapter on it. One of the parts is an explanatory paragraph. It's where you get your search engine optimization. Usually slid down pretty far on the website. The first sentence of your explanatory series of paragraphs will be your one-liner. This is how you're gonna brand your company. And you're gonna use the exact same language over and over because you're branding into the mind of the subconscious of your customer. Anybody here ever branded a cow? A few of you? Yeah, I have a buddy, we branded his cows one time. You lay across the back of his calf, you take that brand, you punch the back of that cow. It doesn't actually feel it as bad as you thought. It just kind of goes, what are you doing? You, you do that, it smells a little like hamburger. But what if you took, <laughs> What if you took a different brand, you put it over the top of that brand? And then you took a different ranchers brand, you put it over the top of that brand. You took a different ranchers brand, you put it over the top of that brand. Anybody know whose cow that is after a little while? It's exactly what your salespeople are doing to your company. You're talking about it 25 different ways. Same language, same words, over and over. It's gonna be your competitive advantage in the marketplace. All right, do we wanna have some time and create some one-liners? All right, part one is you want to decide a problem. What is the problem that most of your customers struggle with? What is the problem? Okay, we're gonna have about a, two minutes to define this. Make it succinct. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do the whole one-liner before we start sharing, but next, I wanna know, explain your plan to help them. We have a product or we have a plan that resolves that problem, that's part two. We have a product or a plan that resolves that problem, okay? Take another minute and a half to two minutes and add the second part of your one-liner. If you're waiting in line, maybe you could do it right there, but go ahead. No, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean to share, I mean actually start writing it out. Yeah, we'll share when we're all done. Thanks, though.
He's the overachievers are the ones in the line right now. He's the valedictorians. And hey, out on Facebook, you're doing this as well. All right, we want to want to see what you're doing. Can they can they comment on Facebook, Becky? They can. All right, so our team, our social media team is watching. So hey, let's get some of your comments on Facebook as well. Okay, let's do the third part. Describe a successful ending to your story. You have about a minute or two on that. Describe a successful ending, and then I want to start hearing some one-liners. Just take another minute, and we'll hear some good one-liners. put our one-liner on the screen so you can read it and compare length and all that. All right, some of you keep working, but we've got a line of people who I think they've, they've finished them, and we want to get through as many. We've only got 10 minutes. We want to get through as many as we can. Will you tell me your name? Nicole. Nicole, welcome. Hi. Give me your one-liner. Many parents are concerned about their child's ability to communicate. We provide an individualized speech therapy approach to give your child a voice that lasts, lasts forever. That's, that's really wonderful. Really wonderful. Okay, here, here, here's one thing I'll say, Nicole. Part one and part two were fantastic. Part three was good, but not fantastic. And here's why. Okay. You said, a voice that will last forever. That's a beautiful piece of poetry, but it's very hard for me to figure out what the benefit is to me. So you'd say, so they can communicate clearly and move ahead in life without any, with, with ease. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, and I love the, the beauty of the poetry. That's nice. But if you say, what I really want is for my child to be able to communicate clearly and move through life with ease and, and succeed. Right? So that, I want that more than find their voice. Or so. That's a little bit poetic. But other than that, I think it's fantastic. Uh, excellent first, first go. Thank you. Okay, next. I'm Robin from Best from the Nest, and many product-based businesses are really frustrated with selling their products on Amazon. We show them how to tame the Amazon marketplace so they can be more profitable and grow faster. Okay, I love, I love everything. I love part two and I love part three. You just did a little repetition on part one. Many products-based businesses. As soon as you said products-based businesses, my mind spun out. Okay. Because I was wondering what's a product-based business and what's the difference between that and a normal business and... But, it's, but then when you said, uh, many people sell stuff on Amazon, but they don't know how to do it really well, they're losing a lot of money. It, then I was like, oh, got it. So just take away the part where I got lost in the first, you had, you, just take away almost the first few words okay. and go straight to the, many people try to sell their products on Amazon, and that's it, everything else is fantastic. Perfect, thank you. Awesome, yep, next. Yeah, he, yeah, great. Hey there, I'm Brian. Um, Ours is, most people think heart failure in pets can't be treated. We fight to keep families together with expert care. Most people think what? Pets with heart failure can't be treated. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. And then we do what? We fight to keep families together with expert care. Okay, I'm not sure how pet heart failure... I'm, a, vet I'm a veterinary cardiologist. 
Gotcha. But but the, the result, I wouldn't think if you're, most people think pet's heart failure can't be treated. So I'm looking for a result for the pet. Okay. So you connecting my, my pet's heart problem with my family splitting up, I think is too big of a gap, too big, a jump. Too, too big of a bridge. So let's go, uh, most people don't think a pet's heart failure can be treated. It's actually quite simple with a, a few process and a pet can live just, your pet can live just as long as any other pet of their type or breed. Cool. Make, make sense? Yes, definitely. So just be a little bit more specific with it. I think you went to a feeling result and I would normally recommend that, but the feeling result really was more um, of therapy, family counseling than veterinarian cardiology. Okay. Got it? Yep, thank okay. you. Okay, great. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Rachel Carroll. Hi, Rachel. Uh, hi. Um, okay, mine is, um, people are tired of taking pills, so we offer medical massage therapies for the relief of chronic pain. We help people have less pain, more movement, and a better life. Done. I wish I could critique you, but I can't. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Hi, yes. Don. I'm Frank. Many doctors fear going into private practice because they don't know enough about business. We guide doctors through the process of setting up a successful medical practice. That way, they can have the medical practice they've always dreamed of. I, I love it. I, I love parts one and part two. They could be a little more succinct in terms of words. Part three, let's give me a little more than just what I'm dreamed of. Let's be, so they can be successful as doctors and as business people. Or something like that, right? Instead of, because right. dreamed of is just a little bit elusive. Other than that, I think it's great. Yeah, F fantastic. Thank you. Can you see how at a cocktail party, if there was a doctor who was thinking about leaving their hospital and starting a private practice or something, you can see how they would want to talk I to you? I run into them all the time. Yeah, yeah. they'd want to talk to you. Guaranteed. Fantastic. Thank Good you. stuff. Hi. Hi, I'm Laura. Uh, with so much conflicting information everywhere, it's hard to know how to take care of your pets. We are a full service hospital and your partner in keeping your pets healthy and happy for a lifetime. Love part two, love part three. Part one, it took me a long time to know where you were going. So when you said, with so much conflicting information everywhere, okay, where does my mind go? Internet, okay. mm -hmm. hacking, Russian people getting North Korean. <laughs> <laughs> That's my side job. I, can I be honest? You didn't have to tell us. It was obvious. <laughs> Say hi to Kim Jong. Also, <laughs> uh, so I would just get right to the veterinarian part. Okay. Uh, I would say um, when it comes to pets, now I'm in. There's so much conflicting information. When Got it comes it. to pets, there's so much conflicting information about how to care for them. Now, you framed it before you got to the information so my mind didn't go off in a, in a trail. Perfect, thank you. Wonderful, great. Thank you. People are unaware or fearful of cyber predators. We offer free cybersecurity training and we'll come to your house to help you implement cybersecurity so that you can protect your family and Use the internet with confidence and vigilance. I, 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 I really like it. It's fantastic. There's one thing I want you to hone in on. Uh, what kind of cyber predator? Like what, I want you to get to what this, because you said cyber predator, and there's so much, like they can take my credit card number, I'm sorry, my debit card number. They can take, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I live by it. I'm not, that's not a joke. <laughs> my wife and I both. Uh, so, so uh, you know, they can take that information. Uh, they can, you know, try to meet my kids at the corner, you know, or something like that. I want you to get a little bit more specific about what a cyber predator can do to my house, because I was a little confused between home security and cyber predator. Other than that, I, I think you dialed it in. So I would just work on that little part, right? And you might not even say cyber predator. You might say, you know, there's all sorts of you know, people having all sorts of problems of this. You're stealing identity theft or whatever it is. Get right to a specific, and then it's got to be fascinating because you're coming to somebody's home and helping them figure it out. Now I'm just curious. I mean, what what sort of cyber predator are you talking about? Both. Um, I, I've so I'm former law enforcement. I used to work child exploitation crimes, but I've also worked cyber security, cyber incident response, malware. That oh, kind all of that stuff. kind of stuff. So I do all of it. 
Yeah, these, yeah. these days, people don't break into your house, they break into your computers, right. which means they can get to your kids, they can get to your credit cards. See how I just did it that fast? Yeah. Yeah, I made it okay. really understandable. It's called the same but different. The same as a home crime, but it's on your computer, and it allows people to fill in categories lightning fast. Okay. Great stuff, but let's, let's finalize that first, that first part, and then we're golden. Thank you. Wonderful. Hi, Christopher Zuck. Most families are tired of paying investment fees, whether they make money or not. Our firm only gets paid if you make a profit, so our investors know that we want you to get the highest returns possible. <laughs> there you go. Is that allowed to the SEC to say that? Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Change nothing. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Skip. And most businesses struggle with accounts receivables issues. With our what issues, I'm sorry? Accounts receivables issues. Gotcha. We help clients convert receivables into cash flow. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. So that they can grow their business. There you go. Right. Let's add that third part. Okay. Yep. Jordan Satterwhite, uh, trucks today are expensive. We help you get the most of it. We protect your truck from the abuse life dishes out. We make it a more profitable work thing and a more fun play thing. Okay, I like a lot of that. Trucks today are more expensive. My mind actually went to, he to big rigs. So I don't know why it did, but it did. And I'm just telling you as a novice, that's what I'm hearing. Pick so, up trucks. Okay, so I'm your, and you do, and you, what, you like rhino line and all that? That's a cuss word. We do line X, but. You do line I see X. what you're going, yeah. <laughs> I'll forgive you. Sorry. Uh, fantastic. So uh, I am your client. Like two months ago, bought an F-150, paid cash for it. Uh, I did. I was so happy. Uh, saved up. Uh, and. I, I already, I'm used to driving a little bitty Toyota FJ40, and now I have a car that's twice as long, so I've hit the mailbox twice. So, <laughs> I'm your guy, right? So you wanna say, uh, most people are scared to death to scratch their new truck. Okay. Okay, so, or something like that. Uh, most people, instead of protect their investment on whatever, it's, you know, most people are scared to death to, 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 uh, to scratch their new truck, or make their, their new truck look like garbage or whatever. We do, we have a bunch of processes, you know, whatever. But g get me to the point, read your first part again. Trucks today are expensive. We help you get the most of it. Okay, st stop right there. Trucks today are expensive means you're gonna solve the problem of expensive trucks. I can't so, do that. Okay, so don't <laughs> say that. Right. That's not the problem you solve. You solve the problem of keeping my truck valuable or you know or whatever it is right but you, that, that that i think that's where i got caught off guard gotcha. you don't solve the problem of expensive trucks i think everything else was i understood it but i could feel my mind literally trying to recalculate after getting lost in that one sentence and that's not what you want to happen so you want to start off with most people want to keep their truck looking and running great because it's expensive then you go oh right keeping and run, running great all right fantastic right thank you next First we can all, stop I, I whenever love you your, want. I love okay. your sport coat, so. Thanks. Uh, my Betsy wife calls this taste. the real estate uh, salesman jacket. It absolutely looks like I've it. only worn it twice because it's a bit bright for me. There you go. There you go. It looks good. Okay. Good job, Betsy. So my line would be um, the medical device industry unemployment is under 3%, and my company, Legacy MedSearch, hires rock stars so our clients can help more patients and make more money. Okay. I think I, li I think I like two and three, but I didn't understand the problem. The medical industry's unemployment, unemployment rate- Unemployment's under 3% in my Which sector. means it's hard to find good- Absolutely. That's the problem. Okay. In the medical industry, it's hard to find really good people. Right. Everybody already has a job. Yep. There it is. Okay. Just keep Got one it. and re replace number one with what I just said, and then keep two and three. Great. Thank you. All right. I think we're out of yeah, uh, time. Yeah, so there one, it is. One thing that you guys can do, practice on each other. And here's a great thing, um, practice with strangers at a Starbucks. I, I would say, hey, I'm working on a, a sentence explaining what I do. Can I just tell it to you and you tell me back what you think I do? And it's, you just have to do that in order to get the real reaction from, from people who don't know what you do. And you, you get that one liner down, you get your entire team memorizing it, you put it on your website, put it on the back of your business card, make it the bio on your Twitter, make it the bio on your Instagram, and make it every single employee's email signature with a link to the website. You also you wanna add on those uh, methods a call to action. Buy it from us today, schedule an appointment today. 
Do all of that and you should see a, a good return. Thank you so much, Keith. Yes, absolutely. And before we let him go, speaking of a call to action, we want you to get the first three chapters of this book absolutely free. Now, we want you to buy the book as well, but the first three chapters free. For those of you watching right now, all you got to do is text Story Brand to 33444. That's 33444, Story Brand, no spaces, and you get the first three chapters. Great stuff. This book is going to change so many businesses. I want to say a big thank you to all of you that are tuning in on Facebook. A big thank you to our amazing live studio audience and of course, a big thank you to Donald Miller. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you, Tim.